Well, for a few years anyway, we've all known that drug-coated balloons are very effective in treating disease below the inguinal ligament. None of us suspected that there might be a safety issue, and certainly none of us suspected that there could be some, something related to mortality. And when we looked at it, we thought, well, a few milligrams of paclitaxel, how could that be related to mortality? Well, our analysis was to go into that deeper, to look at the events, and to see, well, were these deaths just associated with the drug, or were they really caused by the drug? Well, all of these trials actually had an independent analysis before, and it's traditional for a trial to have an independent assessment of safety. This analysis was done because the first time around, the people that looked at these were very skilled uh, vascular surgeons, cardiologists, interventional radiologists, but because there could be an association between paclitaxel, a drug that oncologists use, and death, well then maybe it was good to have an oncologist look at these. So we went back and looked at all of the data again, all of the events, at this time had a review committee, an independent review committee that included an oncologist as well. Results were after all of this work and looking at, I don't know how many hundred adverse events and deaths, we found the same thing that people already knew, that these were not or appeared not to have been related to the paclitaxel. They were related to other things that the patient may have had like heart disease or uh, predisposition for lung cancer because they were a smoker, but they did not appear to be related to the drug. So what we think now is that it was the trial design with small numbers and a failure to follow every patient through five years for at least dead or alive for, for survival. It was a failure of the trial design and probably or almost for sure not a failure of a drug causing a problem that we didn't expect. We were fortunate to have be able to work with Medtronic on their safety data. In fact, we were working them with them since, uh, I think, 2012 on their project. And we were also fortunate to work with the Stellarex data, too, and look at all of these uh, from the standpoint, um, in some cases, of writing an article and helping the authors. Uh, I would help the authors write the article, or in other cases, doing the safety data just like we did for Lutonix. And what was nice about it is that, I think for the first time that I've been involved in a project, the manufacturers were doing things the same way. They were all getting together and talking and talking with FDA and figuring out how they were gonna do something and then doing it um, not identically the same, but close enough so that now when the data is looked at, it really is looked at in a very uniform way, knowing that people are measuring things the same way. I'm not 100% sure of this, but I'm 95% sure that what we see is not related to a few milligrams of a drug that the oncologists have been using for a long, long time. But what I'm pretty sure of is that our trial designs were not what they should have been. We weren't looking at mortality. We were looking at patency or clinically driven target lesion revascularization. So now if we design a trial, we're gonna do things a little differently, right? We're gonna look at mortality. Maybe we're not gonna power the study for mortality, but we're certainly gonna make sure that we have complete follow-up for vital stats, meaning dead or alive, all the way through five years with any of these.